uh, uncovered the story of Virginia uncovered the story of Virginia Jaffray. Or Jaffray. So we're going with Jaffray. So we're going with Jaffray. Jaffray was abandoned by her husband. was abandoned by her husband in 1914. Struggled to raise for seven children alone. Struggled to raise for seven children alone. And narrowly escaped. A life of shame. In one of Eureka's many brothels. In one of Eureka's many Jeffrey's brothels. plight inspired Jeffrey's long plight research inspired and this presentation on Eureka's, this presentation early, red on Eureka's early red she's light history. Also she's also subject, writing a book on the subject, and we cannot so wait for her to finish. Yeah. So, thank, thank, you you so, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. As Dana said yes. As Dana said yes, I live here in Eureka. I'm um, a local project manager and historian. Um, I have to say, and, um, I have to say, I'm a project manager because nothing keeps my attention for very long. I finally figured out a way to um, not have that be a problem professionally. Um, but history, um, but history really captured my attention years ago um, and has never let it go. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. So as Dana said, I so really, as Dana said, um, I really, um, it was really during COVID, it was really um, during COVID um, that I became um, aware and started thinking so about the light district. So I lived about a mile from Old Town, town and, and would walk down to Old Town. I'd find and then I go home and research it, and then I go home and research it, and look for an interesting little story and post it. I have a history blog, so I go and post it. And I was actually, and I was actually, I was walking along the waterfront for those that are familiar with Eureka, and I was looking at the big parking lot between C Street and. And, 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 I thought, well, something must and I thought, well, something must have been and here. I went home, and, that's and I went I home, and that's when I discovered that it was the Scandia and Hotel. Looking up the Scandia and looking up the Scandia is when I found, the story, I found the story about Virginia. And I'd never really, thought, really, thought, and I'd never for really sure thought for, and I'm not quite sure why, but I've never really given district. much thought to the Red but Light District. But after hearing about this woman, and when she, so yes, abandoned by her husband, raising seven children on her own, working as a maid, when the two owners tried to force her into a life of prostitution. She resisted. She resisted. And they beat her up. So this was the story then. So this was the story then. And this is, I think, an important. And this is, I think, an important piece of that piece of, 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 that the story of, of the story of the red light district. And I'll get into that, um, in a, get into that in a minute. Thinking, but, but when I started thinking, I started in, this, in getting interested in this. I started looking at. I started photos looking at other photos, and other things started coming to attention. So this is the Western Hotel. And it wasn't until later when I started researching this topic that I noticed the, the ladies in the window. <laughs> and my guess, and my guess is, is that those ladies were ladies probably uh, working being ladies, like uh, being in a hotel like that and window. opposing in the window. And so, uh, and I, started so uh, I started topic. diving deeper into the topic. Now, when we talk about now, a lot of people, when you talk about a lot of people when you talk about the red light district, it's it's kind of sexy and sexy and scintillating and 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 that's that's really what some people think about. about some people think about when they think about this life, about right? This kind, of life, right? Secret, kind of sexy and, and secret, of um, and all of that. Um, and this was uh, from a book that was written in the 1880s, and the illustration by the guy that, that kind of shows of that same sort of thing. But as I dove deeper and deeper into the subject, I found out that was definitely not the situation for a majority of the women that worked in this district. There may have been a few that chose to work in this particular um, profession. All, um, after all, in the late 1800s through the early 1900s, women didn't have a lot of freedom. They didn't travel by themselves. They didn't own property. They usually didn't have businesses. Everything they did was through their husband or the man, their parents. Where women in this profession were given just a little freedom. And if they were able to operate a house on their own, some of them could actually amass wealth and buy property. But that was not the case for most. But that was not the case there for most. There were a number of ways there that, were a number women, ways got that women got into the profession, but often it was out of economic necessity. It was because they were it was because they were uh, tricked. There were a lot of men, unfortunately, that would promise um, marriage. Uh, um, uh, purity was very important. Purity was very important, as you can imagine, during that time and period. And there were women that would believe, men, women who would believe say men who would say basically anything to get these women to compromise themselves, and a lot of times. 
times they would then leave the women, especially if those women ended up pregnant. Once a woman was pregnant and single in the 1800s, even through the mid 1900s, they didn't have a lot of options. And that was how a lot of these ladies. And that was how a lot of these ladies ended up in this life. There are other reasons too. There are other reasons too. There are women that were alone, widowed, maybe taking care of parents, and this was a way to make money. And sometimes it really just came down to that. Now I'm going to start talking about so California. So of course we think of prostitution as the world's oldest profession, profession, but I'm really focused on California and then Eureka. And to kind of give us some context, I wanted to talk about the volcano theory of sexuality, which was that men didn't have a sexual outlet, and they would erupt in orgies of adultery, rape, physical violence, and even homosexual embraces. So there was a lot of danger in celibacy for men. <laughs> on the other hand, on women the other were hand, women pure, were supposed right? to be pure, wives were right? There, wives were there that you had sex to procreate. That was the purpose of, of sexual and union. So you ended up with and this so you ended up with this dichotomy. In Humboldt, in it, Humboldt was it was even more complicated because in the 1850s, so when the gold rush started, started and white in. folks started coming in. 1852. So Humboldt, 1852. Was, part so Humboldt was part of Trinity County in 1852. There were 1,700, there were 1,741. So this is white males. We're not, so we're not counting here, the Native but, Americans but, here. But, but, but And this is just found, right? those that could be found, rugged, right? And think of how rugged and, and so isolated. Over 1700 so over 1,700 males found in this area in 1852. So that gives you an idea. So that gives right? you an idea, all males, right? The all these males, the danger, um, and, and so um, you can imagine, and, and so you can that, imagine that there was that, opportunity, that here, there for was opportunity here for ladies who were in profession. that particular profession. And so you're oops. And so I you're I oops. One here. I think Hold I skipped on. one here. Hold on. Oh yeah. Okay. Whoops. Oh yeah. Sorry okay. Whoops. Sorry about that. And so Eureka. And so Eureka, Eureka was, uh, Eureka was uh, did, have did have a red light district. I just want to kind of orient people so when I'm talking through today, you know where we're talking so about. So Eureka's a lower district. district. A lot of times we think about Old Town and the Waterfront. But in the 1880s through 1912, the lower district was actually where our co-op is now. And that area. So this area was called the Lower Four. And if you look, this is the Sanborn Fire Insurance maps on the right. Right. And if there are a lot of these maps online that are really fun to look at for a variety of reasons, but if you notice that certain buildings or dwellings are dedicated to female boarding, that is a clue. That is a clue that perhaps this district, that perhaps this district uh, wasn't, in the, uh, wasn't in the middle of town and friendly to families. So this, uh, for folks, like I said, they're and familiar with Eureka, and, and then these are actually three of the houses, and then some along B Street there. So this is that same block. So these houses here, and these here. So that's that block. So that's what used to be in the parking lot. And these were all resorts. It was one of the the names that was used for these particular homes. This is well. This is well. So this is Fourth Street, right here. For people that. Street. So for people that are familiar with this Eureka, block right here this block right veterans, here is where that veterans, is the veterans housing, that new structure is now, so that's that so block. Well so these houses were as well uh, were resorts. Some uh, there was and some and here too uh, that have been replaced. Uh, this one here was, made, by was well, operated by a woman named Minnie Lewis, Lewis, and I'll be talking about Minnie a little more later on. But that kind of helps to orient you as to where Eureka's district was to start. Now it wasn't just there. No, it wasn't just there. There were well, in Old Town as um, well. So um, this will help. So this will help. Oops. Oops. Sorry about this, folks. There Sorry about this, Old folks. Town. There we go. Um, Old and Town. So this, um, and so a this, the a Good Relations, which is actually um, an adult now, shop now, now coincidentally, um, was known um, as, uh, it was Kitty uh, Ferris's Joy, uh, Joy, Joy Emporium. <laughs> But from what I've learned, it, but was, from actually what I've learned, it was actually James Kitty's husband, who James, in who was in the business in the early 1880s. And when James passed away, and when James unfortunately, passed away, of unfortunately, of alcoholism, uh, Kitty, took uh, Kitty took over the business. So, so there were so. some scattered, so there were even, before some scattered even before the district was moved. There were some houses in Old Town as well. 
And so early, early, and so early, early, early in Humboldt. Early, um, I early talked in about Humboldt. Um, I talked about so the volcano what theory. Here so what there happened here in Humboldt? There were, in fact, houses here as early as the 1850s. Um, but it wasn't the community had mixed houses. Mixed feelings about so these was, houses. Uh, so there was uh, a man named Grunman who shot another man, another Henry, man Roehner, Henry Rohner, who was well known for Tuna, if you're familiar with Rohner Park. Grumman had shot Henry Rohner, and it made the local paper. Grumman apparently ran a house. Um, but the newspaper, but the newspaper flat, out said, flat out said it was humiliating to the public, to state, concerning, to the public our concerning our existed. county that this house shameful. existed. It was so shameful. There were a lot of so the there were a lot of people in the community that weren't necessarily thrilled that, that, that there were houses or resorts, like, or resorts like this in Humboldt um, so County. That's um, so that's, found, that's the earliest mention that I found. A woman named Isabella Kingsley, though, was allegedly running a house in 1856. So there were three male witnesses who said, no, uh-uh, that's not what that house House for that's, 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 kind of no, that's not the kind of business she's got. Um, in the 1870s, there were a number of vagrancy, vagrancy laws, which were kind of interesting. Laws, which were kind so, of in, interesting. The 1870s, so in the 1870s, they weren't so much targeting the women, either the, the, inmates, inmates, the, inmates, the, the inmates, as the prostitutes, the inmates, were, known, as the prostitutes were known, or the madams. Instead, a lot of laws, and actually going forward, too, they really focused on the men, the men that were living with these women and, frankly, living off these women. And so a lot of the vagrancy laws, that's really what that was for. And so we saw those in the 1870s. In the 18th, and the, the, uh, the dangers of body houses. We did hear a lot about that, too. Protect your sons, protect your, sons, daughters, protect your, your, daughters, your daughters, take care of so them so that they don't so end up uh, uh, falling into this life of shame. Um, I won't go, um, too, far won't go this, too far into this, unfortunately. There are, unfortunately, there are probably 15 presentations that can be done on the plight of Chinese women that were brought here most specifically to be trafficked into a life of prostitution. Unfortunately, was Humboldt not was uh, not from this isolated from this particular thing. A lot of the trafficking, uh, the women were brought into San Francisco. They were literally auctioned. Um, it is, um, very, um, it is very, a very, very history. ugly part of our history. Um, but I think it's really important to talk about. But they did not just stay in San Francisco. In fact, in fact there was a woman named China and Mary. And I first found her, and I first found her reference uh, operating an opium den in, in, in Eureka in the late 1870s, early 1880s. And honestly, initially, I was hopeful that, that, that somehow she had escaped, you know, the, the, you know, the, the life of prostitution and, and, you know, even if running an opium den was the, the best thing to do. But then, um, I, ended but then I ended up finding um, her. She ended up with syphilis. She ended up with syphilis and passed away with syphilis here. So, so my guess is that's how she ended up here. And in 1885, the Chinese citizens of Eureka were expelled, which, again, that's a whole other history for another day. Day. But one of the things but that, one was, of the said things is, that was said as this was happening was, well, we'll get rid of the Chinese, and along with them, you know, the, the, gambling, you know, the, the gambling, the vice, the prostitution, all of that's going to go away with the Chinese. Of course, none of that happened. Of course, none of that happened because it, happened because it wasn't the Chinese the, creating the, 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 the need, the market, that sort of thing. Um, so, before I talk too much before about, I talk Eureka, too I much about Eureka, Eureka, I just wanted to give you some idea of why Eureka really became the center of prostitution in Humboldt so County. Ferndale so Ferndale had a house on the hill. It was also known as the cottage on the hill. It was between um, town at, between the two cemeteries, and it was known as a house of prostitution. In 1892, a woman named Edna Gardner started building a house in Ferndale, and it. So which I had a little pointer here. This is the Methodist Church. So this is Ocean, and this is the Methodist Church in the cemetery for folks that are familiar with Ferndale. And she started building a house right, right there, next to the town um, right hall. next to the town hall. As you can imagine, uh, as you can imagine the, a lot of folks in town weren't, of folks in town weren't um, thrilled. Um, there were ladies in town, actually, that, that, in town the actually that gathered the night that construction started, started with a horse and, and a rope. And they literally undermined one corner of the house, the of the house before the constable them. showed up and stopped them. Um, um, she was charged with, pro with running, she was charged with, pro with running a house. Done, of course, so the house Edna wasn't Gardner done, so Edna Gardner house. finished building um, her house. Um, but in May of the following um, year, it burned down, along with the town hall, mm -hmm. next, along door. With the town hall next door. Mm -hmm. 
But basically that was Ferndale, but basically saying, that was we've Ferndale saying, saying we've got that one house on the hill, we, house house on the hill. we don't and want any more. more. Um, and there's a lot more to that story that maybe we can tell and another day. Arquita. And then and there's Arcata. And we think about Arcata being maybe a little more progressive, maybe a little more tolerant. But there were two women, I believe this is 1902, Irene Manning and May Roy, that tried to set up a house of prostitution. And there was a man named William Lindsay. Unfortunately, I know William Lindsay from my research on the Indian Wars. And William Lindsay had no problem killing Indians, literally. But he had a problem with semi-nude or nude women in their own house um, where he might see them. And so he issued complaints. He fought and fought and fought and ended up getting that house shut down and the women driven out of town. Minnie Lewis, who I mentioned had that house on the corner of 4th and C, um, she was very entrepreneurial. And so she tried to set up a house in Arcata. Uh, Any folks in uh, that are Humboldt here in Humboldt house, may so recognize that house. So that's at 10th and F. And then he set up a house of prostitution. And then he set up a house of prostitution but there. Again, the but again, Arcata the citizens of Arcata were not, were having, not having it. They filed they injunctions. Shut basically, they shut her, her down and drove so her out of town. To so she continued to operate in Fortuna for a number of years in work. Eureka didn't work. Oh, sorry, Arcata didn't work. Oh, sorry, Arcata didn't work. Eureka did. Uh, Eureka, Eureka did. Took a very uh, Eureka different took a approach. very different so, approach. So, in 1885, in 1885, there was a morality passed. ordinance so, passed. You know, still so, you know, still trying to protect Eureka, the, the good people of Eureka, sons and daughters, that sort of, daughters, that that sort of thing. And the morality prohibited ordinance people going prohibited people from going into houses of prostitution, working in houses of prostitution. It also prohibited vulgar language and other such things, really trying to protect the folks. But and I'm not quite sure why yet, but by 1896, but by 1896 an ordinance was passed, an that, ordinance said no was passed that said no officers, police officers, can, police be officers can be in a house of prostitution while they're on duty. So a bit of a shift. <laughs> Basically, okay. Basically, okay. You know, this is going okay. to you know, gonna be here. Yeah, we need to control it maybe just, yeah, a, little maybe uh, just so a little bit. Uh, so that was 1896. By 1900, By 1900 uh, they, were the house. they were raiding the house. Everybody knew they existed. They were in that lower district that I talked um, about. Um, and officers, um, uh, police officers, law enforcement was starting to raid the houses. Um, sometimes the women would be arrested for being a prostitute or a madam. But often they were arrested for selling intoxicating liquors without a license. That was the focus of their arrest. Um, it brought some revenue and into the city. Um, and and kind of notice. put the ladies um, on notice. In 1901, um, in 1901 there was a city councilman who just proposed the taxing the women every if quarter. The women here, if the women were going to be here, if the district was going to operate, let's just see if we can make money, off, can make them. money um, off them. That, um, that did not pass. But in 1903, there was a very public discussion, no with no exaggeration, I'm trying to figure out what to do with, the, to district. To do with the district. And basically, the district. What, the and basically what the city of Eureka realized, realized, is, realized is if they arrested the women for operating a house of prostitution, then the county got the fine. But if they arrested and fined the women for selling intoxicating liquor without a license, then the city got the money. And so that's what they decided to do. And so that's for and years, so that's for years, years until literally for years, until about 1910, a call, go a call would go out so, every six months or so. The ladies would be told it's time. The ladies would be told it's time. They would literally they would line charged. up. They would be they charged. Would they, they would pay their bail. Their bail. They would forfeit and they would their bail. The and they would be done months. for the next six At months. Time, At the same time, which I found fascinating and found on accident, these women were also required to get traders' licenses. So same again, same names, same, same, Minnie same names. Up Minnie Irene Lewis is up there, there Irene Church. There are a number of names that come over and over um, so again. They really um, so they really were recognized as legitimate business women, except for the alcohol part. And except for the alcohol part. And of course, you can issued. imagine that they were not licenses. issued liquor um, licenses. So it just kept, um, this, so it just kept this perpetual going. revenue stream going for the city. And I will show you this map. And I will show you this map. And I don't have an exact date of this map, but actually the former director of the Clark. Me, provided so this map to me. So I talked about the lower fourth, right? Here's B and C and all these squiggly. 
are the brothels. There were a number. So there were a number. So in the inventory, 32 brothels, brothels were liquor sold. And, and, and this is probably early 1900s. So it was quite the district. So, so it was quite the district. There were a few in Old Town, but not many. It was it was pretty so. focused. And there was so. a reason for that. And there was a reason um, for that. It was basically um, protecting, right, the other people in the community. Um, but in 1908, the police chief decided that just having the district there wasn't he enough. Gave an order he the gave an order that all of the women working in the district had to stay there. Had to stay there. That they weren't allowed, that they outside, weren't allowed of the outside of the district. Literally. Literally. And would arrest, and would arrest women if they were found, women outside, the if they were found outside the district and fined. And this was one Annie. And this was one the Annie, and this was in the, the Humboldt Annie's Times. All women of Annie's class should keep, under cover, keep undercover when the shades of evening fall. fall. The, the minion of the, of the law arrested the woman and placed her in a cell at the Hotel de Cooler. And Annie wasn't the only one arrested. And Annie wasn't the only one arrested. I found another article. This is Maisie Elmore. Again, she was outside of the district. And so she was arrested. Did, she was fined fifty dollars, the equivalent of the equivalent of fifteen hundred and sixty-two dollars today. So as you can imagine, this is so very, frustrating. This is very uh, frustrating. Law enforcement, uh, law enforcement was starting to, starting to the clamp the down on the district in this particular um, industry, and so um, the ladies and so came, up came, came up with an idea. A floating house of <laughs> vice. So and so this particular a, a historian friend of mine in Santa Cruz sent me this particular, sent me particular I illustration. I do not have, maybe out there somebody, out there somebody a does, of a picture of the boat that the ladies of Eureka had contracted to have built on Indian Island. As a, sorry? As a, sorry? Oh, it's, well, oh, it's, well, it didn't work out quite right. It didn't work out quite right. So, uh, so women, of the, uh, women of the half world and their male consort, secure from the vigilance of the police. The, uh, the place has been the scene of the wildest uh, orgies, the newspaper uh, said. The shipbuilder, of course, said, I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea what people were going to be using this ship for. Um, people were very upset, and I could actually imagine the noise traveling across the water. Um, so maybe that wasn't quite as subtle the operations or quite as subtle as they expected them to be. Um, so, uh, City of Eureka said no. The officials in Eureka said, uh uh, you gotta move this boat, you can't have it. And it, they, my understanding of it, it was anchored on the island. Um, and so um, this was in Eureka. They said, no, you've got to move it. And so they tried moving it up to Arcata. The ark, which was recently built on the island in the bay, was last night moved up to Arcata, where it was beached on a marsh. And then again, it talks about orgies and midnight revelries. But the city of Arcata said, uh uh, we don't want it either. And so the ladies actually purchased property in Fields Landing. And the plan was to take the plan was to take it across the railroad tracks, railroad tracks and land it on this land property, um, on this and, property have um, and have it function as a building. But the people of Fields Landing but didn't, want, Fields it Landing didn't want it either. There was a mass it was meeting held in Fields Landing, and they, actually, Fields Landing put and they actually put a guard out there to make sure, that they, to make sure that, that they didn't bring that boat across the landing. I have not. I'm guessing this is the end of the effort, but I have not found anything past this date regarding this boat. So I'm I'm not quite sure what happened to it. I'm sure it was a solid structure. I don't know if they sold it or what happened, but uh, as with everything else that I researched, I'm going to keep digging. No, no, no we did not. No, we don't know even who commissioned it exactly. There were never, I could not find any names attached to it. There's some pretty prominent madams, so I could take a guess. But no, other than the shipbuilder, uh, he was identified, but he was it. And again, he just kept saying, I had no idea, I had no idea what I was doing. Not my fault. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, mm -hmm. so that was that. So that was that. So things did so things get, did uh, get tighter, um, and tighter and stricter. Um, there was, um, a, woman there was uh, a, a woman in particular, story, and this is a longer um, story, an African-American um, madam African who ran, uh, who a, ran bordello uh, a, a bordello at the corner of 4th and B, so right across from the co-op. And, co -op. Became and she became a particular to interest to me, and I'm just going to touch on her briefly because I think her story is very interesting. So Humboldt County, as we know, has not always been a friendly 
only place uh, for uh, people of color, for minorities. Um, and in fact, this is a quote that just talked about the fact that there were no Chinese um, in Humboldt County for a number of years after the expulsion. In 1900, uh, there were 25,000 white people and 12 African Americans. But Mamie Wright yes. came in. She came but Mamie Wright came in. She came out in about 1905, um, and she operated a house, um, here, for she a she a operated a house here for a number of years. Uh, she had uh, Caucasian uh, white Caucasian her, women working for her as, um, inmates, as, as inmates as well as white cooks, um, and, that sort of cooks well. and that sort of thing as well. And this, this one is she deserves a presentation in herself, and she will get one. But she unfortunately became a lightning rod for a lot of the efforts to close the district. So in 1909, there was a test case. Yeah. So there was a test case. So there was an attorney here in Eureka, um, E.M. Um, e. Frost and Good Government League, and they actually, and they and actually, and I don't know how private attorneys, can, do know how private this, attorneys they can do this, but they somehow were they able to were initiate, charges, initiate charges, against Mamie, charges against Mamie Wright for operating a house of prostitution. And a lot of folks in the and community, got very, in the community oh, got very excited. Oh, finally, finally, they're going to take efforts to close this district, right? This shameful little part of Eureka. Finally, they're, gonna, they're going to Mamie do that. Ended Mamie ended up being charged with living in, being a, charged with living in a, a disorderly house. house. She was looked at as a right? test case, right? And if they're successful in shutting her down. And I was, trying to, out and I was trying to figure out why Frost became so interested. Frost became and, so and, interested. And, and there were just the good government lead got, got involved, but, 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 but were they a part of it? What was going on here? What instigated this? Well, what I found out later, digging deeper, was in fact Frost had been hired by a former Mamie's. inmate of so Mamie's. There so there was a woman who was living in Mamie's house as a prostitute. Mamie, I think, kicked her, I think out, for kicked her out for one reason or another and held, another on, to and held on to this woman's so trunk. At that of time, so at that period of time, clothes were very valuable, other belongings were very valuable. And apparently Mamie was holding on to this woman's trunk because the woman owed Mamie money. There was a dispute about this. There was a dispute about and this. So Frost and so Frost initiated this entire thing, thing so that Mamie would be arrested. So Mamie would be the arrested. other women in our house would, the be, women arrested. Arrested. The house would be arrested. Meaning, house would be arrested. The Meaning the house would be empty. And he could get his client's truck back. And he could get his client's truck back. Mm -hmm. Later, he ended up representing Mamie. So it had absolutely, so it had nothing, absolutely to nothing to do with closing the district. He literally just had Mamie arrested to get her out of the way so he could get the trunk for his client. So there was that. So there was that. Unfortunately for Mamie, she came into the spotlight again. Well, in April of 1912, the city began specifically targeting African American madams. For some reason, they were of particular interest, and they literally doubled the rent. Madams. On African American madams. But Mamie stayed. But Mamie stayed. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. In November. Oh, there we go. In November, oh, there we go. Uh, other women. So, uh, so other women. Beginning so they, so they right, were beginning, beginning this, this right? Beginning this effort to close the district. Um, um, but they had not done in so. November of in November of 1912, uh, there was a, uh, there was a, a customer, a client, however, however you'd like to, to um, call him, in Mamie's house that attempted to kill one of her inmates. He did not succeed, thankfully. He ended up dying, committing suicide. But Mamie was again then in the spotlight. Um, and it kind of initiated, um, and it kind of initiated this whole bigger conversation about, about closing um, the district. Mamie accused, um, the, city um, Mamie accused the city of targeting her in particular because she was African American, and of course they um, were. But the city investigated, um, the city itself, investigated and itself, itself, and of course, and of course they declared course themselves they innocent, innocent, and of course they weren't targeting her. Um, but it did begin this um, movement, um, and part of this movement then, movement was, closing then the was closing the district. And so again, this is this was Mamie's house here on the corner. It's the auto. Laundry. Something toy right laundry. there. This was right Minnie there. Lewis's this was house. Minnie so Lewis's house. So all of this, they're, looking at, this. Closing they're, they're looking at closing it down. And, and they, they actually, actually the property, adjacent property owners, so not the folks that own the houses, but the, owners, the, the, adjacent, property owners, the, houses, but the adjacent property owners hired an attorney who ended up writing a letter, who ended up writing a letter to those the property owners that owned the brothels and said, "You've got to shut them down. You've just you've got to close them. It's that property values are decreasing. You've really just you've got to shut them all down." And sent the letter. And sent the letter. For 
a while, the letter was um, ignored. The property owners, of course, um, property had, owners, tenants. Of course, they had tenants. They probably the didn't take care well, of the houses very well, didn't have to. Well, um, didn't have and so the letter was ignored for a while. Um, the mayor ended up stepping, um, in, stepping in and saying, no, 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 we've got to close this all down. Part of the interesting thing about this, though, is everyone acknowledged that this wasn't going to drive the industry out of Eureka. It was only going to uh, more widely distribute, basically, widely distribute the houses basically the houses of prostitution, and that is exactly what happened. That exactly what happened. So, uh, when so uh, we went to First Street, Second Street, street, first street, uh, second street uh, just, Third the Street, they just, the uh, district ended up closing down. Uh, ended up closing Ironically, down. Not, long Ironically after that, not long after that, the city started complaining about the drop in property tax revenue, right? Because a lot of the houses, that had, right? of the houses madams, that had been rented to madams were empty. Nobody else wanted to be in them. Um, and then the um, surrounding property owners actually said that their properties weren't as worth as much and they needed a drop in the assessed property value to save money on the property taxes. So in some ways, it really backfired. Uh, Mamie, as I talked about, uh, Mamie, as I talked about, and I know more about her than anybody else, just because she's been a focus of mine. Um, she ended up running the Pioneer Hotel. Um, she was accused um, in 1915. She was accused in 1915, and this is where it was. So this is First Street here. She ended up being accused of running a brothel, and in fact, I think um, she was. Um, it was what was called a two dollar so house. Would so customers would come in two dollars, and there was a fifty cent um, bed fee. So that's um, what, so that's <laughs> what <laughs> Mamie did until 1916, um, when she was charged with running a house of prostitution, and she ended up closing her house down. Um, but that in 19 16 started an um, effort to abate, um, to the, abate other the other properties. Um, again, maybe just, kind, um, again, of maybe just kind of she seemed to be kind of the lightning rod, and to, rod to, and to, to, spark to spark other efforts to close the and district. So April, um, and so in April of um, 1916, the police, and, and this was, there were a lot of communities um, throughout, throughout California and maybe throughout the country, I really haven't um, looked too much yet, that were looking, um, at, closing their that were looking at closing their districts. And so this started that. And so this started that. They were using the abatement. Act uh, if to force, being used, uh, if there was a property being used as a house of prostitution, uh, the property, uh, the property owners could be forced to close that property and keep, property it, and keep it empty for a so year. They that for so a they year. lost that so revenue for a year. So it was kind of a big deal. So kind of a big by, deal. June, um, by June, the rooming as houses, were as they were called, were closing um, up. And this article actually said that half a dozen of the women appeared at police headquarters and asked for one more day to move out. So as far as where all these women went, I don't know. I mean, a lot of them were forced into the life and really didn't have other skills. So that's something that, um, so that's something course, that of course, as I keep going in my research here, here. but um, they looked at, at using ordinances that were used in other areas, were used in other to, keep areas uh, to keep those houses closed. And by June 19th, and by June 19th, it was a clean bill of health. Uh, that the city was that the city was of cleared of houses of, of prostitution, but of course that wasn't true. <laughs> that wasn't um, true. And I'm only going um, to touch on this guy. A gentleman named Fred Weaver actually operated a number of houses of prostitution with his wife, Annie Weaver. And if folks are again are familiar with Eureka, this is the Waterfront Cafe. And so this is and so this is a well-known brothel. This is what it looked like at some point there. And then the Weavers actually also. Also operated a laundry, um, and that was, uh, um, and probably, that was a um, probably a place where they recruited some of the ladies that worked for them. Um, they tried to use the red light. They tried to use the red light abatement, abatement act, act um, but the weavers, at least, the weavers at least for a little while, just ignored it and just, just kept operating. Um, so he was, one of, um, so he was one of those kind of um, guys. Eureka still, um, still, they were working these, hard to close these, down uh, these. These uh, districts and these houses, districts and um, these houses. But of course, as um, we know, but of course, uh, as we know the professions uh, never really stopped, completely. Never really and stopped completely. I and I was actually about talking to somebody so about this. So in 1925, more, more abatements, right? So that was 1916, 1916, 1916 1917, 1925. Again, the city tried again. And, and this might be interesting to some folks. So these are the names of some of the property owners. And somebody brought up Pine Street, and I couldn't remember. I... I, 1449, so 1449. So I'll have to look that up. So it's not listed in this particular list, but they started listing the properties in the paper. I think is a deterrent for property owners um, that were running these. Um, Sorry. Sorry? Which one? Which one? I was just telling her the third one. Third one down, 707. Third one down, 707 Second Street. Mm-hmm. 
So yes. Uh, so, so yes. Uh, so you'll uh, maybe recognize some of the names. Perot, Adorni, Owsley. Um, so. So. So anyway, so the city kept. Trying, so anyway, so the city kept trying, kept trying, kept trying. Kept trying. Um, and this um, is just one of the ladies, and this is just uh, one of the ladies one of the uh, that ran one of the houses. And here we go. So I did have a conversation. So I did have a conversation about today next about this next situation. situation. So again, so again, that, again that the city kept trying to shut these houses, houses changed, down. Of course, right? things just changed, right? Because, change, because the industry does not go right? away. Does not so, go this away. so this is Ruby, Ruby Sherman. So Ruby, this is about 1929. She was actually in a detention when home a when a brother and sister uh, actually got her out, specifically so that they could traffic her. So this is Clark Foster. And that is his sister Mandy. And that is his sister and, Mandy. Um, and, and so they, um, ended, up and so they uh, ended up at they least uh, identified they were identified as trafficking this young girl. Uh, they were prosecuted, um, but, um, they, were but they were not incarcerated for long. And in fact, in 1940, Mr. Foster there was still, Foster, trafficking, there was still young trafficking young girls. Young girls. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Same Sorry? Same that I don't know. That I don't know. If the um, the foster the, the foster from Freshwater that street the guy that donated the zero is their grandfather. Grandfather. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So. And you just you have to fill and for you poor just, You have to fill for poor Ruby there. So this is one more story. So this, this is one more heart. story, and, and this one broke my heart. And I actually found this picture. Found this, this, picture, picture. Published this picture. This picture was published in the North Coast um, Journal when a number, um, of, when mugshots a, a number of mugshots were, were, found, were found accidentally, accidentally and given to the Historical Society. And I found. And I found. She just struck me. And and I her name was published, and it was Janice Nelson, and it was spelled a little funny. And I couldn't find anything about her until I started doing this research. And in 1929, there was, there was a McCoy woman named Minnie McCoy who was actually uh, murdered uh, in the Oric and area. There, and uh, there uh, was, uh, was a witness who saw many, um, who and, saw a many uh, and a man uh, having an argument in that area before she was killed. He was a guy that, that owned a garage here in Eureka. And this woman, and this woman apparently heard, apparently that, he heard witness, that he, as um, a witness, was in danger. Um, was in danger. That, that she'd heard threats. That, made that she'd heard threats man. made against and this so man. And so she him. warned him. She was a prostitute. She was a prostitute. He said, "I have, no, he idea said, I have no idea who you are." He was married. And he was married not and, and pretended not to know her. She was then arrested. She was then arrested for being a prostitute. Mm. Mm. There ended up being an attempt there made, ended on, up that being an attempt made on that witness's life. He but survived, literally she but was literally she was arrested because, she tried, because she tried to save this man. But that really goes to highlight, but that really goes to what, highlight these what these women faced. They were ostracized. They were ostracized. A lot of times they were not in that profession through any fault of their own and would not have been there by choice. Yet there they were. In the profession, as you in know, the profession, um, as you know, still have um, women. I, mean, I mean, as, still have as, women. I, mean, as, as I have been researching I this, I can't help but see the parallels. Just, see the parallels. Uh, when, it's just uh, when it's poverty so and abuse and all these things that get people into the profession, still haven't changed. We've got, still the, internet changed. We've got the internet evolved. now. Things um, have evolved, but it's still there. Um, and but it's still there, and it's still hard, and it's still dangerous. And even though some of this history is entertaining, and it is for me as well, I do think it's important that. We realize and this and and hopefully maybe looking at it from the historic can perspective help look at can help us look at even human trafficking or prostitution today, today um, in a little different and more, in a little different light. And more sympathetic light and with that and with I that thank you all I want to thank and you all and see if anybody's got any questions see if anybody's got any questions Was that someone's name? Cyperia. Cyperia. 
Yeah. So, is that how you say it? Cipri is that how you say it? Yeah. It was one of those. Yeah. Was so one of those there were so were many different terms that were used to, to refer to, to prostitutes. And so, and so that was one of them. Yeah. You know, fair but frail. Yeah. You know, fair but frail. I'd actually. This is something else I forgot to mention. So when I started researching this, I started. I tried to see if anything was written about Humboldt County's red light district because it was incredibly active. And it appears the red light district stopped at San Francisco, according to all the books that I have. I mean, there's, there really isn't any mention, which is part, which is part of why I got so interested and why I'm doing so much research. I think there's a number of stories uh, that need to be told. Um, we have a couple. Uh, we have a couple. If, if somebody's interested, um, uh, dubious distinctions. I call them. So there was uh, a woman in 1901 that convinced a young girl from San Francisco to come up to Humboldt. Um, the story was that she had told this young girl that there was a theater troupe up here, even though the young girl had taken a different name and. And here, when she got here and was put in the house of prostitution, told the madam that she was, uh, 18. Madam so, that she was like 18. So it looks like potentially uh, the girl, knew what, uh, the girl knew what she was getting into. But, but Aggie Kelly, the woman, Aggie that, Kelly, sent the woman that sent her up from San Francisco, was actually prosecuted uh, for trafficking these young, uh, young, 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 young women and was the first woman in the state convicted. So she went to prison mm -hmm. for three, so she went to prison years. For three um, years. And then... This was, let's this see, yeah, was, let's see, yeah, 1910, these, these two men seduced two, men two, seduced young, girls two Eureka, young girls in uh, Eureka, Sadie and Annie uh, Sadie and Craig, uh, Craig uh, promised, uh, promised them marriage, said so we're, we're going to go up to Portland, and then we're going to go to Spokane, we're going to get married and live happily ever after, took the young girls to Portland, put them in a house of prostitution, eventually, fortunately, those girls were able to escape, but these two men were the first ones in the country convicted under the federal mandate. Act. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, um, oh yeah, it's um, yeah, I, they're yeah, Greek, I, they're Greek I names. I can't. Uh, I'd have to look those up. I I'd have to look those up. I, I've um, got them. But so, um, yeah. so, so, so yeah, so so we've got some of that the too. The woman up top, she was convicted yeah. in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah, the trial was, yeah. in, San yeah. The trial was yeah. in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. San Quentin. So this is yeah, this is yeah. But it was a big deal. It was the first woman ever in the state. Yeah. Yeah. That was 1901. That was 1901. Yeah. Sophia Feingold was the girl that was sent. And the, Sophia was 15 or 16. It was interesting. The madam in that case uh, was Evelyn Miller. And Evelyn, uh, I think she was fined like $25. And that was it. But I think it was because. But I think it was because, and at least she was believed. She said that the girl had told her that she was 18 and was there voluntarily. And it was there voluntarily. So I don't know. You know, but a 15, 16 year old can't be held responsible for those kind of decisions anymore. But, but. For women. Uh, for women, uh, there were efforts. Uh, there were, there were, efforts. Women, there were, there were women that would come up and talk about that sort of thing. Um, um, and then there was, there was a, a, a anti-white anti slavery unit. unit. Uh, sorry, and that's movement. In movement. And that's in the early 1900s, 1910, like something like that. There were a lot of conversations, a lot of organizations formed to help women who had been trafficked. But nothing, even though speakers came up here and talked, I think, like some of the young girls that were rescued. Because here, that they they did happen up here, they were generally it's sent to the Magdalene, Bay Area. Am it's Magdalene, right? am I saying Magdalene that right? House, there, was Oakland, there was a Magdalene House in Oakland, and a lot of these girls, um, also, of these girls were also facilities. sent to detention um, facilities. They were seen, um, to, um, they were seen to, um, uh, to just be causing trouble, to just be causing trouble and doing this intentionally, whether true or not. You know, more seen as problems. Oh, the rescue mission. Oh, 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 yeah, well, the women's, oh, yeah. well, the women's I so I, I know a, Kitty Warren, there was a, a woman that operated one a couple down, and I think the address, I've run across the address, but, but, but no history yet. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Yeah. well, there you go. Yeah, that yeah. I had not heard. Yeah, that I had not heard. Many of them must have had children. Was there, right? was there a separate school? Was there... Yeah, so that was kind of yeah, a mixed bag. Yeah, so that was so kind of a mixed bag. To, so going back to, if you remember the story that I told about Edna Gardner, the woman that tried to build the house in Ferndale. Mm -hmm. So I, so unfortunately, I, and, unfortunately and, and, and I actually... So she was trying to build this house. So she was trying to build this house. Literally she got basically out literally got burned out of Ferndale. She ended up working at a house in Eureka again. I was able to find her. 
find her name. She wrote a letter to the San Francisco paper after a lodging house down there was blown up with dynamite. There was a man named Charles Bernard who was injured in that blast. He wasn't killed, but he was injured. And she wrote the San Francisco paper saying, my husband disappeared five years ago. The name is similar to my husband's. It was Charles Bernard. Her real name was French. I'm wondering if this is my husband. For, for the sake of myself and my child. And she was working in a house and prostitution in Eureka when she wrote this letter to the San Francisco paper. Unfortunately, that was not her husband. But what that told me is she had been deserted by her husband and was raising a child alone. Um, later that year, I think it was the following year, um, there was a notice uh, that she was giving up her child for adoption. So a lot of the, and I've read some memoirs, um, there were women that, that basically boarded their children. I mean, because pregnancy happened all the time, and I could do this entire, and I could do this entire, I could do an entire presentation on the dangers of abortion, because a lot of women, because a lot of women would attempt, and a lot of women died that way. But there were children. But there were children. There was a woman named Edna Wells, who is a pretty well-known madam here in Eureka, who brought her daughter Maddie into the profession. Edna was here in the early 1900s. In 1950, I'm still running across. I could still run across Maddie stories Wells. about Maddie um, Wells, who was being arrested, um, being arrested for running Maddie houses of prostitution, and Maddie was in her 50s or 60s so, you know, by then. So, you know, so too. sometimes that happened um, too. Um, yeah, just a number of different um, things. Yeah, um, I haven't um, found any, any accounts of children in the district, but that didn't mean it. It, doesn't mean it, didn't didn't mean it. it doesn't mean it didn't happen. Um, I've read a lot, um, or a little bit, bit about uh, boarding houses in Eureka, and et cetera, well, which weren't, well, may or may, or may so, not have been, yeah, you know, so yeah. I wondered if, I mean, you were probably were able to distinguish by the resort, some of these by the resort and the yeah. sort of that sort of nomenclature, you know, on sandboards. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. the sandboards. But then there's a lot of kind of like the abatement. Um, a lot of times, and this is interesting, in the newspaper, for any number of different reasons, even when I did research on the Spanish flu, people were, the newspapers would post the addresses of the people who were ill. It was really strange. So it was much more open back then. So if somebody was arrested, a lot of times the house was mentioned. Sometimes the names of the houses. You know, there was a house that was just number you know, 15, address, you know, and I could tell by the address on the street where that was, where the, where the, the Iron Gate, and then there's references so, other um, places. So, and just um, knowing, you know, there was, just there knowing, was, you know, there was, enough, there uh, was enough uh, mentioning, specifically, uh, the address, specifically the address of 101, of 101, 101 and 109 where Mimi Wright ran and her resorts and Minnie's on the other side of the street and that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Not many of the buildings, but in the lower fourth, there's not much that remains at all, but in Old Town, there's still a number that still do. Other questions. Other questions. So my mom was so my mom was in '93. So she was in Eureka. I was born in 1950. So let's say late 40s, early 50s. She said, she said Sundays, I believe. Sundays, I believe. And some daily and some of the other department stores were open only for that prostitutes. So that was the time that they were allowed to have a child buy whatever they needed to buy. I haven't, I haven't done that, I haven't, much, research I haven't done that much research in that time period yet. I've been focused on the late 1800s and early 1900s, but I'm not surprised. And the women probably preferred that too. I mean, because they were judged, you know, the, the proper women. Um, I think, well, again, going back to the Ferndale story, you know, there were a lot of complaints in the paper that, that the women that, that worked in the brothels had the nerve to go and actually shop downtown, you know, and the proper women were just appalled that they would even be exposed to these women. It so it was both. probably yeah. a favor to I, both. I, I yeah, I, I, I believe it. And certainly there was a very active district in the 1950s. Um, um, interesting, it almost seems like an extension of sunset laws oh, yeah. for other oh, yeah. minorities. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And they're part of town. Oh, yeah. By sundown. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. I yeah. have never heard about that with yeah. women with prostitutes. Yeah. 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 Well, the 1908, yeah, restricting them to the district and literally arresting and fine. Yeah. I hadn't. And I've done research. It's fabulous. I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Other questions, thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. thoughts. I mean, even I'm ideas. I mean, because I'm still research, doing this research, I will continue to do this research. Um, made some nice connections, um, today, some connections um, today already. But, uh, um, anything, but uh, else, um, anything else, or stories um, you think that should, stories, be, you think you know, that pursued, should be, yeah. you know, pursued? Yeah. Um, I know that, uh, like in actual old town, there were a lot of hotels, like 
and whatnot, like yeah. in the upper stories, above yeah. the stores. Um, are there any like brothels, uh, like early brothels that you found? I was just people like, oh, these are yeah. Well, I oh actually, yeah. Well, I was actually, able actually to um, was able to interview a gentleman um, that uh, grew up in Old Town. Um, he's 102 now. And uh, and when he was a kid, he had a paper route. And he said the papers had come out at one in the morning. So the kids, you know, we get the papers at one in the morning. And he said Opera Alley was lined basically the upstairs, the second floors, Opera Alley were all brothels. And the boys would actually compete because the women were great tippers. The paper was a penny, and they would tip a penny. And he said sometimes they would compete. He said there were some houses where he just knew to go, and literally you walk up the stairs, and at a certain step, it, it must have rung a bell or did some made some sort of noise inside. So then the lady, the woman of the house, would would come and get the paper. Um, yeah, so it was yeah, it was pretty specific. And with the addresses, a lot of them are the back. You know, the the addresses from the alley and stuff. And I've got quite a few, and especially and I've got quite a few, and especially if you've got something in particular that you're, that you're curious about, let me know. Um, I've got business cards that I can pass out when I'm done here. So yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Over the Oberon was the Oberon. The Oberon I've heard. Um, I'm always careful because if I have, but there are a million. I mean, I've probably got and over different periods of time. And over different periods of time. So that's been trying to figure out kind of where the ladies were, and then yeah, and who ran the houses. And there were some that owned their house. Well, many Lewis. I mean, not only were some of these women financially successful just in running the brothels, Minnie Lewis actually had racehorses. She owned them. So the woman with the house on the corner that failed to to operate a place. She ended, a she ended up leasing Dell. a ranch in Rio um, Del, where, um, where she kept her horses. And, and there were newspaper, newspaper stories about the ladies, not only hers, madam, not only hers madam, but other well-known madams, you know, piling into the wagon and going to the, the horse races here in Eureka. You know, so to a certain extent, they were kind of integrated. I mean, it was kind of an interesting thing. But um, I, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure. Well, they talk about when the ladies had to line up, right, for when the city of Eureka. Was, them was arresting them every six um, the months. Newspaper um, the newspaper talked about the hats and the parasols and, and all the things that these ladies would wear. And the race and the racetrack. And yeah, 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 yeah. Over yeah, 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 yeah. Over yes. by Costco. Yeah, exactly. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Other. Yeah. Other. It's, and again, I could. Keep it's, going and again, I could keep going and going and going. So presentations for another day. But yeah. Any other questions? Great. Oh yeah. Great. Oh yeah. No, but if you look up. Um, no, but if you look up, um, you can always email me and I can send you a link. But if you just, I have like a million old photos on there too. So if you just look up like NorCal history or Eureka historic photos, it should pop up. I will link it. To I will it. link it to YouTube, it. It's going to be on YouTube, I guess. And then so I'll link it to it. Yeah, to make sure. Yeah, so that people. I'm also, doing for, who are I'm also doing, doing for people who are interested. I'm doing a couple of Ollie classes one in July. On this, and it's one is on this, so and it's two hours, so it'll be more details. Um, one is on, uh, one is what, on I'm calling, uh, what I'm calling uh, Yurka's first opioid, opioid crisis. So, so that's opium dens and morphine and laudanum and, and the different things that were here. Um, and then the others focused on settlement period and the India Moors. So. Yeah, there were others. Yeah, there Mamie were others. Particular, Mamie in particular was of, um, was of interest to me. I don't know who's watching, but I'm. Gonna I don't know who's watching, but I'm gonna because she was a badass. She was. She was. She, was, she, was, she, was, she, was, she wouldn't. I mean, she was. There was so much pressure for her to leave, for her to close down. You know, she kept uh, being thrown into the spotlight, um, and she stayed. Um, and, and, she it's, stayed. It's, and it's. Yes. Yes, I do. Yes, um, yes, I've I do. Um, I've been able to try. Whole that's story. again a whole other um, story. But yeah, she was in Colorado. Um, but yeah, she was in Colorado. Um, consistently, um, it appears, consistently, from, it census appears from, census from census records that she was born in North Carolina. North Carolina. She was in Colorado um, in the 1890s. Uh, um, uh, Tolaride, and then she ended up in Leadville. Then she was in Pueblo for a while, and then she ended up here. And and she came into the spotlight because she was accused of orchestrating the kidnapping of a white girl. In 1907, um, which became a really yeah, scary. which became a really scary. I will. That would be another presentation. Yeah. yeah. So, but there um, were others. Yeah. But, but there were I'm others. Thinking, I mean, but but I'm thinking. I mean, when rents were doubled and all of that, Mimi may have been the only by one. By 1808. Uh, sorry, 1908, 1909. Yeah.
Yeah. Anything else? Anything else? Great. And you'll have my contact Great. info. And you'll have my contact info. Card, I mean, anybody that wants a card, please, please just let me know. Out. And I mean, feel free to reach out. Or or again, if you've got questions, or again, if you've got clues or names or anything else, happy to help if I can. Happy to help if I can. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.